All right, look, an issue and a frustrating issue over the past few months that the platform has been operating has been um, the really poor journalism, mainstream journalism around a very liberal, trendy thing called disinformation. Well, I call that a lie when people who lie online uh, and people who lie in the news media or tell false stories. Um, a whole industry, though, has grown up around disinformation. It's fundamentally liberal lefty academics with an axe to grind who have been funded by universities, private trusts, and in some cases, the government. Uh, and they use their research as an excuse to practice cancel culture, calling people out, deplatforming them, uh, calling for bans, and generally wringing their hands and going, woe is me, there are people who don't agree with me in the world and they must be stopped. Uh, it reached new heights last year without the head of our SIS publishing a guide, our security intelligence service is publishing a guide on how to spot a hater or a possible terrorist by what websites they go on, whether or not they braid their hair and are interested in home improvement. But things, uh, I'd also add that uh, Ben and I have been trying desperately to get one of these disinformation people on the platform and they just don't want to talk to us because they are scared of being asked questions and they've actually gone as far as to say that coming on the platform might put their lives in danger, which is just paranoid rubbish. But there is an even more disturbing development, and Ben Espiner, executive producer of um, Mornings on the Platform, joins me now. I just... You yeah, got I quite didn't, excited. I, I, you didn't tell me you promoted me. That's uh, fantastic. It's not a promotion, Ben, because you're not an executive above anyone else. You're still just on can your I own. I still call myself an executive producer? You can call okay. yourself well, that that's that's if that fine. makes you feel better. Makes All me right. feel fantastic. Now, Ben, firstly, you would join with me in saying... The disinformation people, and we're talking about Kate, Hannah and others, they really do not like engaging with anyone who's going to ask them a real question, do they? And we have tried and tried and tried yeah, to talk to them. Not at all. And it seems like they've gone a little bit quiet since their botched media briefing last year, which the platform, our uh, uh, more regular listeners will know, were excluded from purposefully. Um, when we reached out for an explanation to that, they, they did claim that they felt that their lives would be in danger or that there was some sort of threat of physical violence there, which is just nonsense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, they have been very reluctant to answer questions. Mm. And but Kate Hanna has still been fronting on media. There was well, another the wee burst of, of it. Yeah, most of her interviews in mainstream media have been relatively void of any serious explanation about who their research is for, uh, what the end game is for the disinformation project. There's kind of some vague information about what the research entails, but we want to know what it's for, what, what, who, yeah. what, who is this for, what are they trying to achieve. Yeah. And the Herald recently, David Fisher, that famous... Uh, unpartisan, um, non-biased journalist for the Herald. He did a Q&A with Kate Hanna from the Disinformation Project, didn't he? And we got on that. We yeah, well, I spotted that come up and I thought this could be a bit of fun. And, um, yeah, a, a lot of the questions were a bit weird. I asked her, I wanted to know whether she, whether dis the Disinformation Project were actively advising government agencies or groups or organisations yeah. on who they should engage with online or yeah. on anything, really, because they hadn't been clear about that. Yeah. Uh, and she said that they weren't. But, but I would they be, are. I would be very surprised if the Disinformation Project are not asking for and in many cases receiving meetings with government representatives. My understanding is that they are consulted regularly on people who might be threats to security. Well, the the response that she gave me suggested that they had no involvement with the Department well, of maybe Prime that, and Cabinet. Well, maybe that's disinformation in itself. Did she tell her who does pay for them? Because they've got she, a weird relationship. She's told me she doesn't work for the university even though that's where she works from. Yeah, well, the university, I think all of this ties into that Hefeno Atodi Kora thing, that um, uh, Centre for Violent Extremism, Research into Violent Extremism. But uh, I did ask where the majority of their funding came from. They said that they were largely funded through philanthropy. And uh, I then followed up asking if there were specific philanthropists yeah. who were funding them and uh, did not get a reply. Okay. In fact, I think they blocked you, kind of. I didn't, didn't see my comment come up after that, which was a little bit strange. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez, that's open and democratic. More concerning, Ben... There are also reports, and look, I think you'd agree with me, um, and you're not a crusty old misogynistic male, you're a young person. There's not a lot of transparency, is there, about who they are and what they're really driving at a lot of the time, is there? No, there isn't, which is, yeah, which is concerning to me because uh, you'd think that... I mean, that's all we wanted, really, was a yarn, is to come on and, and tell yeah. us yeah. just what, what's going on, what are you doing? Yeah. All right, so, but now they want to teach this sort of... 
how to spot a terrorist or a violent extremist. They want to teach... There's another group that seems to be very similar that wants to teach this in schools. Or is already well, teaching Well, yeah, this is the thing, right, is that they can say, they can remain kind of secretive and, and, and act like they're not doing much, but it, it seems pretty obvious to me that behind the scenes there is a serious influence there because now it is popping up uh, in the school curriculum. A story was published in News Hub um, saying, calls for urgent changes to school curriculum to teach students how to identify conspiracy theories and fake news. Um, Ooh, and I that wasn't specifically from the Disinformation Project. It was from a third-party group called Toa Toa. Um, their CEO, Mandy Hink, who refused to come on the platform as well, said that she wants to see students looking at who is behind the information, what evidence there is, what others can say, what others say about it. Um, and to me, I mean, I could be wrong, but that seems as though it's been standard practice in school for a long time, and it used to be called just peer-reviewing your sources. I mean, cross-referencing what you're yeah. looking at, getting the information behind it and seeing what other people are saying is not really a new thing. So what concerns me is that, is that actually what they're doing, or, or uh, is it a new thing now titled disinformation where they bring into it uh, this rubbish about braided hair, Pinterest accounts, and yeah. the like? All right. Uh, do we know who funds that that group with the Ma another Ma yet another Maori name? Uh, no, we do not, no. I, I don't think they get government funding, but again, she has been reluctant to engage with me over email anyway, so I haven't had much information from her. All right, Ben, I do appreciate that it is difficult sometimes being a journalist, but I think in, on this issue and with the group of people, we're just hitting a brick wall of people who I, I don't think want to answer any hard questions, or am I being cynical? Am I, am I being a cynical old No, there here? really isn't much information on it, which is, I mean, you know, it's fine if you're going to have a, unit by, a bunch of academics talking about something and discussing things, but... Yeah. I think we really need to be keeping an eye on what is yeah. sort of And going. other media seem to interview them and give them the expert status without apparently it would seem knowing much about them or bothering to answer the, ask the, the obvious questions that, that you're asking. Well, yeah, they're mostly sort of gushing about why it's so important that work like this is done on mis- and disinformation uh, with a, a little bit of information about how the research is conducted but almost no reference to what the actual end game is there. Yeah. Uh, ben, good work, mate. Keep banging uh, that drum. And I'd just like to say, I invite anyone involved uh, in this area of expertise, and, and Kate Hanna in particular, who, who has said quite directly to us that it's because she's afraid of, of us hurting her some here, somehow. Or yes, well, or actually, I did ask her on that Q&A why, so, why the Disinformation Project are so selective uh, on which media that they speak to, and it was just a repeat uh, of that same excuse of, I feel as though there's some sort of physical threat there, um, which... Yeah. Have you ever threatened uh, anyone involved I've never in this story? One. You've uh, been a journalist for a long time. I don't yeah. think you've engaged in much physical violence during no. your interviews. Um, and also... It would be over the phone for about 10 minutes, yeah. um, which doesn't pose a yeah. huge... No, no, I've never broken someone's arm by being rude to them on the phone, no. maybe. But let's hope that we'll keep pushing on this and hopefully uh, some of yeah. the rhetoric calms down uh, and we uh, can uh, get some uh, answers out of them. I just want to clarify, this new group, so this isn't part of the... This madness of disinformation isn't part of the school curriculum yet, but it's there are... It's not part of the school curriculum yet. I think that... Uh, it. Education Minister Jan Tanetti, is she the yeah, education yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that she has made reference to it and said it's something that she'd like to see more of. Um, so we'll have to keep... Uh, but I think you really... It's worrying. I think we need yeah. to be keeping an eye on what's, what's sort of weaseling its way into our school curriculum. Well, that's um, your job as executive producer, Ben. I'll crack on with it then. All right, very good. That is uh, Ben Espiner. Just bringing you up to date with the group. And, and just because you won't engage with us doesn't mean we go away... And we don't raise the concerns about you, Kate Hannah. And once again, I say, Kate, gosh, if you want to come in, we'll get a security guard for you if you're that paranoid.